e fai a chi ne che era te ma haere 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 tu la e te pautikanga e te rangatira anko mihi kawana ki apo i moto mihi karikia e whakapai pai tātou o tarana o tohu tau o tātou kaihanga he ora ngā pai mo te kato me ki o mihi whakatau ki a tātou ko whakakaone Tēnei te mihi ki a koutou. E hara tātou he kanohi hau. Te mea pai o tātou e noho noho nei i tēnei taki wā ki te mōhi o tātou ki tētei ki tētei. Mātou hia hia, hei whakarongo ki a tātou manuhiri, ki a tātou manuhiri tuarangi nō ngā tōpi tō te whenu nei piki mai kake mai. Mōhi o wau tētei nō te atia. Ngā te awa, me ki kahanunu, me ki te tanifa, he piko he tanifa no Waikato, Apanui, ki ora wera, me ki koutou no ngā tōpi tō te whenua e hau mai nei i te Tairawhiti, i konik, i te taha o tēnei papa ko heipipi te pā. Piki mai kake mai. Karawe, karawe tata hui. Te hui e tata ko faka kaone he faka fiti fiti kore me ki faka rongo ki o kuto mahi kuto tu ki pai. Ko waku nei faka ro aha ko tata mahi tai. Ko te mea nui mō koutou ngā iwi o Tūranga, ka noho o koutou mana, me o koutou motuhake tanga, mō ake tonu, ko koutou ra. Koe rā te mea nui. Nō reira e te whānau. Welcome to our distinguished guests from all over. Thank you so much for the gathering, Simon, Hamish, Peter. Koutou Ma, who's come together and um, to uh, support us. We're looking forward to listening to uh, your experiences in your areas. And then at the end of the day, we'll figure out a, a two-runga solution. A two-runga solution. Um, I'm well informed, well aware that Ngāti Pro has their own solutions. And so it's great to actually uh, come together and share our experiences here from the motu and um, be able to hopefully um, enjoy the fruits of your experiences so that the well-being of our community will be better going into the future. Um, just want to say thank you, uh, Wira. No te komihana. Ko koe e kawe a mai ngā ture o te komihana. He said, the, <laughs> we don't always say to me, I'm only acting, I'm carrying the messages of the commission, local government commission, to uh, wherever he goes. He doesn't actually uh, make the rules, but he carries the rules and makes sure they are implemented. Uh, we do have a situation, I just want to make you aware, <laughs> that the plus or minus 10%, it's uh, very thin in the, on the East Coast, and there's only two seats. <clears throat> One in um, uh, the Tafiti Ward, and one in the Wayapu ward. And it would be a shame just to have one representative on the East Coast, sir. So I just want to make you aware of that. So, uh, yeah. so but on, on the town side and the two runga side, the plus or minor, minus 10% is Kate to pay. I'm, uh, that's what I thought. Was it the thing you were making me aware of? So, mate tono ki ākwe. Afi mai, afi atu. Nō reira, tēnā tātou. Tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou kato. Kia ora. Uh, Rehit, what's our waiata from, from your waiata group? <laughs> te aroha he garu ki te au Umitia kwa makam papa ki a mau A tamari ki to ake te rangi Yeah. 
ハリコマテコイエテミニタオテタリマタウラマエメキカオヤマヤマタアロハキアイエモトナワファカタ I just want to say thank you to Hekia for her role as the Minister of Education. And uh, it's not an easy role, but she carried it well. And so we just, from all of us, send our greetings to Hekia on her retirement. So, no reira te nata te, te nata te, te nata te. Kia ora kātou. 
To our esteemed speakers this morning, it's um, lovely to hear from you guys. Uh, Fano, if you've read the Hotaka or the program, you would have seen that um, that Matai Smith's name is there in regards to MC today. I am obviously and clearly not Matai Smith. <laughs> um, if I if I am, I've gone maybe five shades darker. And yeah, let's just leave it at that. <laughs> there are many comparisons we can make, fun of. but um. So yes, I'll be our MC for this uh, for today. Um, actually, standing up on the stage, I'm kind of thinking of that um, that rongo fakata fakatoki he tata runga he roa ara roa e fanu. So we're quite close to the top here. Um, but I will be kicking us off. My name's Josh Farahinga. I'm a councillor for on the Gisborne District Council. Uh, it's my pleasure and honour to serve our to serve our community. Uh, and it's also my job to kind of keep us ticking over. Our first kōrero will be from our, also from our Mia Ano and also Penny, Penny Brown. Just in regards to giving the LLB context. So, what exactly is the, is the LLB? So, I'd like to ask our our whanau to come forward. Well, um, kia ora folks, um, LLB is a relationship which is uh, part of the uh, Turanga RE settlement. And so when the Minister of uh, Finlayson said this is what the Turanga EV wanted, and he said, what do you think, me? So I brought the topic back to the council and we fully supported it unanimously. And so we've been waiting for about, oh, it must be about four or five years now. And I initially wrote a letter about three years ago to the various chairs of the iwi to say we are ready to go because what we wanted to articulate was actually have iwi, Turanga iwi contribution to the long-term plan about three years ago. And because the three-year plan actually puts in the um, strategies, the work plan, and also the budgets that come along with it. And so we um, weren't ready at that time, so kāpai, at least we asked. And now we've come to this juncture. We've had a couple of meetings, and now we've come to a point where we are going to uh, listen to various speakers this morning and then we'll come up with a two-runner solution, like I said before. So I don't have much more to actually add to that, but I just want to acknowledge everyone that's here mm -hmm. today, and um, hopefully that through this relationship, um, I'm going to say that relationships um, are born from a willingness to work together in the first place, but also mature enough to say no and yes at times and to agree and to disagree. And not to hold grudges and at the end of the day we can still have a, a cup of tea. To me that's um, a relationship that continues to work. And we all have our um, bits and pieces that, and our various philosophies of where we come from and our firm beliefs of um, various um, thought processes. And so I'll just leave it at that in terms of the relationship we, we as a council fully support the LLB, we fully support its intentions, and we also would love to actually work harmoniously forever, but I know that at times there will be subjects that can be parked and other subjects that we can progress. And sometimes it's just the timing of um, projects or philosophies. You know, I, I just harp back into history back in those days when um, gay marriage wasn't even thought of. It was actually taboo to actually be um, of one, one thought or another. But now we've matured as a country and now we can actually get married. 
or gay people can get married. <coughs> New Zealanders are leaders. You have a look in Australia, you think it was straightforward. But they only neighbours across the road, across the ditch. And look at the tenuous debates they're having just for that topic. Now, we're actually maturing as a country to say, can we actually end our you know, lives with dignity? And that's a debate that will, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be, be policy in 10 years' time. Guarantee it. And so those sort of things would have never been thought of a long time ago, but we as a country are debating. So that's why I'm saying sometimes timing is the um, essence of some of the decisions and thoughts, and as we mature, uh, we get to get to accept these sort of things. Anyway, hoi anō, nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou kato. Kia ora. Gee, Josh is right. <laughs> Uh, oh, Josh is always right. Morena <laughs> um, uh, My name is Penny Brown, and I'm the chair of Chai Changa Mahaki Trust. I'll start with one of Ming's last closing statements. Today's the opportunity for a Turanga solution, but to be fair, that f as far as GDC is concerned, there, can, uh, there, there has to be a Turanga and Ngāti Pro solution of how we deal with council. And I guess after we've done this, Mahi, I won't rest until we, we are all in the room at the same time with the same co purpose working things forward and not have arbitrary rules which separate through one door, Ngāti Pro will come and talk to council and through another door, Tūranga will come and talk to the council. <coughs> the iwi, the hokainga of this area, will decide amongst themselves when, what doors they go through, yeah. when they go through and what they will do. Now I'd better get back to the notes that Robin wrote. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and as you would expect, she wrote notes for his worship. And as you would expect, he, he didn't speak on any of them. <laughs> so I will, I will do his as well. Okay. Um, but just, bef just, just a moment to pause and thank um, our locals who have come, Rong Fakata, Tao Manuhiri, and Jai Jungle Mahaki. I'm pleased to see a number of faces here. Uh, it's worrying when you sit in front of a computer screen and you're seeing the pānui out all alone by yourself and you wonder how many machines it's gone into. So um, I'm pleasantly surprised. People are busy, 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 busy. I don't know when we will ever not be busy. Um, that's the nature of the beast. So I acknowledge all our locals who have come. Very appreciative of your uh, time to be here. Uh, I acknowledge, um, I guess, the three authorities that we're dealing with today and the, ho and the people who are behind the... Waikato River Authority, the Rangataike Group, and of course, um, Kahununu as well. Hi. Um, I, I think it would be uh, amiss of me not to follow up on another comment that Mia made. He said that um, Sawida always refers to himself as a, a carrier of messages, and I think we are all carriers of messages. Um, but we're lucky today that um, with yourself, Sawira, and Toro, we have two exemplary carriers of messages. Mm -hmm. And um, they carry the, the, the work they do, they do it with a bomb. And it's the, a lot of us uh, aspire to um, <coughs> that, that level and that degree of uh, enactment. Yes. Right. So the local leadership body, and it's called LLB, as a co-governance forum between Council and Turang Iwi. It is a result of the Treaty of Waitangi Settlement Legislation, specifically <coughs> uh, the Naitamanu Hidi Claim Settlement Act 2012, then the Rongofakata Claim Settlement Act 2012. Uh, this body, LLB, will comprise of six Iwi representatives, two from Naitamanu Hidi, two from Rongofakata, and two from Tiaitanga Mahaki, uh, with six representatives of Council, the Mayor and five councillors. So Council and Turanga Iwi have been working uh, this year on establishing the LLB in, this, in, in October 2017. In preparation, we welcome you to listen to the representatives from three Iwi local authority co-governance models around the country. In New Zealand's post treaty settlement environment, a key form of cultural redress is to strengthen Iwi involvement in local authority decision making. 
From what we know about co-governance, it often means that there are equal numbers of iwi representatives and council members involved in managing natural resources as part of or after a treaty settlement. Usually, and an exception is the Waikato River Authority, councils retain final decision-making powers over the management of natural resources. This is in keeping with the council's responsibilities under the Resource Management Act 1991 and the Local Government Act 2002. So as I said, from, uh, to welcome you all here today and we thank our visitors who have come to share their experiences of co-governance with us that we can learn and understand before we too embark on a co-governance pathway uh, with our council. As pointed out by our Mayor, our Turanga Iwi, consisting of Tiaitanga Māhaki, Rongawhakata, Nai Tāmani, have some experience of this through the Wastewater Management Committee. Some experience, uh, quite a lot of experience. But it, may also, but it may be also useful to reflect that we have much earlier experiences where we took legal action against the Council due to our environmental concerns with the dump and sewage outfall pipe. Uh, we acknowledge that our collective past has been turbulent at times, and the LLB, however, opens the way for Council and Turanga Iwi to develop a new and enduring relationship. Uh, last month, Nai Taumanihiri appointed um, Waireta uh, Amai and Martine Blanford as their representatives to the LLB. Jaitanga Mahaki and Rungfakata are still to make their appointments shortly. As Iwi operating in a post-settlement environment, Rungfakata and Nai Tamanhiri face the ongoing challenge of capacity and capability to respond to a myriad of issues. Council and resource management matters are but one of many areas that we must have strategic oversight of. We're hoping that this will be something that LLB looks to address. Uh, Te Aitanga Mahaki will return to the Waitangi Tribunal in April 2018. Um, though unsettled, they wish to maintain involvement as the LLB develops. Collectively, Turanga Iwi see a future where we will always be here. Uh, we will always have mana whenua, and whilst the individual faces of our representatives may change as a people, we will be here time immemorial. To that end, it is our fervent hope that the LLB can provide meaningful and mutual benefits for all that live in our way. Kia ora whanau, before I introduce our, our next speaker, uh, there's one little part in regards to the housekeeping that I need to go over. So uh, in regards to evacuation procedures, the fire exits are out to the left and right of the conference facility. Um, to the right you can also go through reception as well. Uh, to the left, go down by the toilets and then through the fire doors, down the corridor and the fire exit doors to the left. Man, that's a very long, quite complicated fire exit strategy, eh? If there is, in the event of a fire, go that way and there's, there's a fire exit just out over there. And then go this way and there's, go out the front where the reception is. Um, the assembly point is behind the hotel on Reed's Key. So the assembly point is behind the hotel on Reed's Key. Uh, also, please do not go out into the pool area in the rain because it's very slippery. Toilets are down to the left of the, co the conference facility, so just down here at the left, women's toilets are right in the front, men's toilets are around down to the left, then just slightly to the left again. Thank you very much. Um, the first speaker for this morning <coughs> is um, I'd like to introduce <coughs> Simon Stokes, who is, who is presenting on behalf of the Rang Rangitaiki <coughs> River Form. He's the <coughs> Eastern Catchments Manager of, at the Bay of Plenty Regional Council. Uh, the, the Rangi Taiki River Forum is a permanent committee formed from requirements of the Ngāti Manawa Claim Settlement Act 2012 and the Ngāti Whare Claim Settlement Act 2012. The forum's purpose is the protection and enhancement of the environmental, cultural and spiritual health and well-being of the Rangi Taiki River and its resources for the benefit of the present and future generations. The Rangi Taiki River is defined by its geographical catchment area the forum membership is made up of representatives from Ngāti Whare, Ngāti Manawa, Ngāti Awa, Hineuru Settlement Requirement, Ngāti Tu Whare Toa of Bay of Plenty, Tūhoi, and from Bay of Plenty Regional Council, Taupo District Council, and Whakatāne District Council. 
The members of the forum must act in a manner so as to achieve the purpose of the forum. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Simon Stokes. Thank you. Papua Wahu Tanakwe, Tifari Tunei Tanakwe, Tina Koto, Tifa Kainga, Tiranga, Akiwa, Imanaki Nei Te Kopa, Pawutira. Tēnā koutou Rauranga Tirama, Tūranga Nui Akiwa, Wakato, Kahanunu, Ngā Te Awa, i te konehira rohi te tai rāwhiti, i mihi mai hāki a koutou te tōi tēnā. Tēnā koutou Tūranga Nui Akiwa Tangara Whenua, Ngā Mihi, ki te whanui hui hui nei tēnā koutou ka tō. Ko Waiahau, ko Simon Stokes, tuku ingoa. Ko Waiahau, tuku Akiahau ki te Tarawhiti. Ko Hoki, tuku kainga nai nei. Hei kai mahi ahau mō te toimawana ki Whakatāne. Ko tuku tūranga mahi. Te ni wāhi kai te ake te whenua te awa, ko whau takiwā rāwhiti. I ranga tēnei whakaru mihari mō tātou katoa. Kia ora katoa katoa. I heard Josh mention that I've never been so elevated or esteemed in all my life. And I'm just a worker bee. I'm not so fussed about being up here, to be honest. And that's why I actually uh, from me down there. Uh, kia ora. Um, firstly, it's it's a great honour uh, and a privilege to be here on behalf of the Rangataiki River Forum uh, to be uh, providing a kōrero today on uh, co-governance. As, as I've worked <coughs> in it for the last uh, seven to eight years. Um, my Chair, Maramina Virko, Ngāti Manawa, uh, and Deputy Chair, Earl Riwi from Ngāti Whare, send their humblest apologies for not being here. Um, they really were quite upset, but I suppose um, as Chief Executives in their own runangas, their business this week was uh, of such that they couldn't make it over. I even tried to get the previous chair and deputy chair to come and call it to you as well, but unfortunately they were unavailable uh, as well. So you're, you've got me, um, but um, I, I'm very proud to be able to be here to speak. Um, why am I here though? Uh, my role, and this may come up during the presentation as uh, we cover off co-governance, my role is champion, as they term it, within the forum. So I sit right beside the chair, uh, alongside her or him, uh, through the process of running the forum and implementing the forum's mahi through Te Ara Whanui or Rangataiki. Um, into the future, if you're wanting to set up your co-governance roles, you'll need to look at somebody or something somehow working like that because it's very important. And I think if you are possibly surprised at the emotion that I may put into what I talk about today a little bit, being an officer of council, it's because I'm not just an officer of council. Um, I work for the forum in a sense. I'm employed by the council, but my loyalty sits with my uh, queen. I'm the worker bee, not I mean as the, the queen. So my loyalty sits in there and so Sometimes it's quite hard to actually know where my feet are. Am I in council? Or am I in forum? Or am I in both? And that's part of my role as champion. So it's quite interesting. I'd just like to introduce two of my colleagues here today too. Hedawini Simpson, who is Senior Maori Policy Advisor and has been along the journey of the forum for a long time now. And also uh, Shari Kamata, who is the Governance Administrator and uh, pretty much runs the ship as well. And they're just sitting down the back here. Uh, my my panu for today is broken into two bits, really, uh, two parts. I'm gonna give you a bit of context 
about that I'm going to talk to you before. I think it's really important before we launch into understanding the second part, which is co-governance and practice. And I know you're also keen to hear about how it's implemented as well. My background and what my work is, is about operationalising strategies and doing the mahi. So I tend to dive into that. I'm not so keen on the, 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 the policy planning language. And you'll probably see that come through when I start to waffle on about what we do. Um, but just before we do that, though, the Bay of Plenty regional area has got quite a lot of uh, uh, Maori involvement. We have over 35 iwi, over 230 hapu, uh, and a third of the area basically is owned by Maori. Uh, the Rangataiki catchment itself is 80% owned by Maori across the various iwi. Uh, who have rohi or interests in there. So uh, co-governance is certainly something that uh, we are quite heavily involved with and uh, there will be uh, subsequently many more. Uh, we only have 17 iwi settled so far, so we're only halfway there. The Langataiki River uh, Forum has uh, <coughs> six iwi currently, Tuhoi, who have just taken up their seat, uh, Ngāti Manawa, uh, Ngāti Whare, whose legislation, as Josh mentioned, the 2012 uh, Settlement Claims Act of both iwi are the very foundation of the <coughs> forum. It's the legislation in various sections that mandates the forum to exist. It's not a council decision, the legislation mandated the forum to exist. We also have uh, Hini Uru Trust, or Hini Uru, sorry, they're not a trust, they're an iwi in their own right. They are based, if you don't know, around the uh, uh, Napier Taupo Highway area uh, uh, in and around Tarawera. Uh, we also have uh, Te, uh, Ngāti Awa uh, and uh, Ngāti Tuwhari Taua Ki Kawara. Uh, and the three uh, local authorities are Taupo, Whakatane and Toimuana. Uh, we are uh, about to We've been notified by the Office of Treaty Settlement that we're going to have another member join uh, in about 18 months, uh, Te Whare Ki Taupo. Uh, and along with that, they will ask probably Taupo District Council, another council to join them so that there's still the balance of, uh, of, of council to, to iwi. Uh, if Ngāti Rangatihi also uh, settle and want a seat at the forum, Ngāti Rangatihi is just west of Ngāti Awa, in, uh, in, Eastern, in Bay of Plenty, um, then we will have a forum that will be the same size as my own Toi Moana Council of 14 members. <coughs> Just to give a bit of perspective to the, to the catchment, as uh, Josh uh, mentioned, the catchment, the, the forum area, the co-governance area is defined by the hydrological boundaries of the catchment in the sense, so it's very catchment based. Uh, it's actually just uh, under a quarter of the regional, of Toimuana area, so it is enormous. 70% of it's in primary production. It is the key economic area for the Eastern Bay of Plenty. It's got 52% plantation forestry, of which you'll all be familiar with, the Kainga forest area planted in the 1930s and still, still in place. <coughs> uh, not many catchments in New Zealand have that extent of forestry. It also has a part of Te Uruwera, and it has a uh, part of the Furunaki as well, an iconic uh, forest in New Zealand. And you can see a range of other things. It's also got four hydro dams on it as well. Matahina and Ani, Anifenua or Aniwaniwa uh, are the biggest, but it also has two other smaller ones further up the catchment that not a lot of people know about and a huge amount of waterways. It is a big catchment in Toi Moana area. Purpose of the forum is on the board there, and Josh read it out. I'm not going to read it out again, but I just want to make sure that you understand that the purpose of this forum is enshrined in the two pieces of legislation that essentially created the forum in our co-governance base. Every member of the forum has a role to implement the purpose. That is the sole focus <coughs> of the uh, co-governance work. 
key points. I may have just covered those off for you. But essentially, if you're thinking about this side of things with regards to the statutory aspects of the uh, two acts that, that form the basis for our, uh, our governance, uh, that provides a whole heap of statutory provisions inside of those that have given us the framework to actually then set the, ne the, the next uh, parts of the development of the forum. Um, and it is a permanent statutory committee that just sits within council. It's not a anything other for council, it's a permanent statutory committee. The only way this committee can be disbanded or remove itself is by consensus amongst itself that that's what it wants to do. Um, it's uh, uh, one of three that we have with the Tutumaru or Kaituna uh, also there. Um, it has six key functions that are laid out in the Act. I'm not going to go over all of those functions. But one of the key functions, though, was to prepare a river document or a river strategy. And that is called Te Ara Whanui or Rangataiki, Pathways of the Rangataiki. And they had to do that. So when they formed in 2012 within council, uh, by the end of 2014, they had workshops through uh, the creation of Te Ara Whanui and had uh, engaged with the community of the Rangataiki. And in February 2015, it was approved essentially by the forum and then approved by Whakatane and Regional Council which then basically I've been working to deliver over since that time, the last couple of years. But they had to do it. The other thing that's really interesting about this is that Kia ora whanui or rangataiki has to be put into the regional policy statement of the regional council. So um, that's the first, it actually has created a reshaping of the regional policy statement to create a chapter uh, called co-governance because we know that uh, uh, this one won't be the last one uh, and it is added as a compendium to the back of the regional policy statement, the actual document, but the document's objectives and actions are part of what has occurred through proposed change three. And proposed change three last week was approved by Toi Moana uh, uh, after having it go through a hearings process, which was a huge, um, huge accomplishment uh, by the forum and actually by Toi Moana, um, because in my opinion, uh, um, this is probably the most powerful place that Te Ara Whanui or Rangataiki can sit, because we, as a council and other district councils, it's not just about having giving effect to it, it's actually about recognising and providing for. And you, some of you will know that some of this subtlety is really important when it comes to actually uh, addressing the kaupapa of something important as this. It's very interesting, ladies and gentlemen, uh, taking a document built by a co-governance in a co-governance setting and then trying to take that kaupapa and put it into a regional policy statement it's not the easiest thing in the world, and you lose the subtleties and the nuance of the document, which is why the council, in a sense, has agreed that it is a, sits at the back of the regional policy statement, not to lose any of its uh, mana, but to ensure that the words are all there as well. Um, just to make that point. And uh, any of... Oh, sorry. Yes. Actually, we didn't <laughs> clarify if we want to take questions or not during the thing, but I'm quite comfortable to, uh, to take questions. Sure, Stuart. I was just... Oh. Simon? Oh, that's I saw Stuart before. Um, can I just ask you, is this different to your statutory acknowledgement thing that sits alongside your regional plan for um, Environment Bay of Plenty? You know uh, how you've got a... Um, I'm, not sure, I'm sorry, I'm not sure how to, how to answer the question. Um, You've got a statutory acknowledgements appendix that sits alongside the um, the RPS as well, right. from what I understand. Right. Right. So I'm just wondering if this oh, is the same thing. No, but well, it, no, it's not. It's not. It's um, it's higher. We we address all of our statutory acknowledgements as as an organisation should. I've got my council hat on, but this. 
this uh, mahi that I've just been talking about is quite different. This is the first of its kind in our region, and to be fair, it has taken some uh, um, socialising to to get it to where it's got to. But I can't I can't understate how important it was last week for my council to approve essentially proposed change three to now occur with the hearings tribunal's recommendations coming through. It's it's a major achievement. And it's interesting too because now it may seem a long time mm -hmm. since 2012 when the Claims Settlements Acts were, were, were started the forum right through to now. But that has been one thing that's kind of been holding the forum up with regards to really being truly convinced that Te Ara Whanui is, is the very vehicle that they need to focus on. If for instance our next TUI is actually about how we now strategize around implementing the, the objectives and actions much more thoroughly than we have today. Because we have been doing it, but now we're going to actually, everyone's going to go, yay. You know, it's like crossing the river. We haven't got all the stones in place at the moment, but we've now got at least two solid ones to put our feet on. Okay. Any questions? Sorry, yes, sure. Um, I think you mentioned frameworks. Um, have you, has there been some consideration given to uh, values? Values-based framework, or a pick-on-the-base framework? Um, very good question. I might ask Heather Weenie to, to help me with this, but essentially the values and aspirations for this statutory process and, and, and the co-governance vehicle that we're talking about is in Te Ara Whanui. So inside of that, if you looked inside the document, you'll see uh, the, the core values of the co-governance collective iwi, mm -hmm. and then that translates into their aspirations, which then folds, unfolds into um, objectives and actions. I think a key point, and it's the same with Ohiwa Harbour's strategy in Te Marua Kaituna and other, these strategy documents um, in a co-governance setting have much more in them that contextualises the setting, mm -hmm. as opposed to, say, a standard council document. And, and it, that is where the values come through, because e, we bring those values through, because it's not your normal statutory document, if I think I've answered the question. Uh, kia ora. Um, anyway, for those of you who like uh, flowcharts and, and, and mm -hmm. where policy things sit, this is quite important, and I know it says kaituna, uh, but it's actually the same for Rana Taiki, and I think the key thing here, for those of you who are wondering, how does the forum influence policy and influence things that you see here, you can see where, oh, that wasn't it. in the middle here it says Kaituna uh, River document, that's where Te Ara Whanui sits, you can see a line going directly to the regional policy statement, so things like our NPS for Water uh, program work is automatically picked up into uh, the process for the forum in relationship to its own document. I just wanted to also make a point with regards to uh, co-governance and co-management. That's quite important for, for my iwi uh, in, in, our, in our forum is that, and this underlies the thinking that essentially underlies how, how we um, are working is that co-governance is a shared decision-making uh, on a policy and strategic matters, which then drives the implementation of Se Te Ara Whanui or Rangataiki. It's as distinct from perhaps a co-management co situation where there is a sharing of the decision-making around the operational matters. I think the point is, is that there's a little bit of a, perhaps a hierarchy or a, an understanding here that needs to exist when you're setting co-governance uh, in its purest form. But the thing is, of course, it's got to translate down into something that matters on the ground. So, co-governance forums, what's different? <coughs> Essentially, uh, I've covered off the first, uh, the first bullet point there, but also in the legislation uh, of uh, both our Ngāti Manawa and Ngāti Whare Acts, uh, that, that helps define the terms of reference, which is really important with regards to helping shape uh, the purpose <coughs> I put up on the board before and then the functions of the co-governance 
um, uh, forum in itself. And this is a really important thing. If you don't have a solid basis around which to make those decisions at a co-governance level, particularly when you're in a committee setting, then it can start to uh, move and in, in, in shake a little bit when it comes to the hard decisions or the more complex conversations. Um, and um, there is a standing orders as well. And our standing orders, it comes from local government based standing orders, but it also is embellished with uh, uh, the council's own tikanga Māori uh, processes and other aspects that, that takes the, um, the level of the strictness of the standing orders and perhaps the council sort of emphasis around it and dilutes it down to the setting that's much more appropriate to work <coughs> for those in a co-governance setting because you've got a mixture of, um, of understanding and context in there and that's quite important. Um, the other thing too is very simple is that everyone's at the decision making table. Uh, kanohi, kanohi te kanohi. Uh, it's very important uh, and sometimes those decision makers dive right down into the engine room and you have to haul them up a little bit but uh, you know, okay to buy. A lot of people uh, like to actually figure out what's going on, and they have an emotional attachment to some of these things. It's um, uh, fundamentally important. So the the setting of your co-governance committee, whether it's on marae or in council buildings or wherever it is, there's a formality and an informality that needs to occur. And we've learnt this over the years with our co-governance work that's slightly different to perhaps sometimes the real formal processes of Toi Moana or maybe other councils. And it's quite important to be able to allow that to occur. There's, there's little subtleties. Uh, sometimes we have Komatua or Kuya attend and other, S, uh, other, other people. Um, how formal do you be with regards <coughs> to the setting that you're having the porodo of the day in? And that's um, really important to understand as well. And, and what we try to foster is a, I suppose, a, 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 and it's a challenge for the chair, is to understand that aspect to how the uh, hui will work uh, through that time. Um, because, um, as I say, it's not so formal a setting that you really want to work in. Um, and of course, workshops, anything that where, where I suppose you can take away some of that formality of, uh, of, the, of committee meetings, as all of you might be aware of, is always so much more beneficial. Um, the other aspect of uh, yes, oh, 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 um, uh, we just had a question on from someone from live streamers. If you want to ask questions, if you could ID yourself so that the Fano on live stream know who it is that's asking the questions. Kia ora Fano. Are we on live stream? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Everything you say, Ken, it will be held. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I need a new job. <laughs> Um, I just would like to ask you a question about the settings, the context of the governance forums. How often are you able to bring that onto a marae? I see the photo here is marae, but it's obviously it's marae. Yeah. Um, we know that a lot of the forums that are managed or um, organised with the council are in a very council type yeah. setting, yeah. which often takes away the ability to integrate tikanga and māli into these into what's happening. Um, so do you manage to facilitate that in a balanced way if you're talking about co-governance? Yes, it's a, it's a very good question. Um, and I, I forgot to mention at the start that uh, being involved in co-governance for about eight years, one of the things I recognised very early on was that, and it came from uh, uh, some of uh, our iwi or hapu at the table, was that they felt uncomfortable. And that's not uh, uncommon uh, within Toi Moana's own um, own meeting rooms. Um, so we started the process of basically just getting the forum to agree to a venue movement around the uh, the uh, rohis or rohi uh, contained within the strategy. So for Rangataiki, um, the chair has got the forum to agree to the fact that uh, we move the, the hui uh, to each of the members. So we've had hui across all of the members um, for Rangataiki, it does provide some logistical dynamic that's pretty hard because it's uh, Taupo is a long way from Fokatane and, and you could meet in Murapara all the time, but that's not really fair on the other iwi uh, or councils. So it's very simple to do. You just um, get everybody to agree to it. The, the governance 
administration becomes slightly more tricky. Uh, and Shari can account for that because because of the way we lead and administrate each of the hui, and we have four hui a year with the forum now. It was eight weekly, but it's gone to four a year. Um, um, Shari organises with each of the, the, the partners, iwi or council, when it's their turn to host, to host, and she provides all the other context of that governance administration. So it's a fairly simple task in hosting, and that means we can move from marae to other buildings, etc. The other thing about that too is it allows for the agenda, particularly on marae, to cater for tangata whenua who are coming into the marae uh, and who want to speak as well. And so you can allow for um, issues and agenda items that are occurring within that area to perhaps uh, be put on the table. But you do have to organise it with your chair because there is a process, so you need to set that up. But it makes people feel a lot more familiar, and it's quite easy to do. All you have to do is get everyone to agree that your venues shift throughout the uh, throughout the year. Right. And my time must be flying by. Yeah, five minutes. Um, uh, what makes uh, co governance work? Uh, essentially, is a, a list of uh, uh, aspects there. Um, I won't uh, um, pick on them all, but essentially relationships is probably the most important one. If I've learnt anything over the last eight years, it is that the right people in the right place at the right time make a huge difference with regards to implementing the very work that you're going to devise. And that's so critical. And um, that's all based around relationships. And, and so at the moment in Rangataiki, uh, while we've been meeting for about four or five years now, we're still just understanding each other with regards to a whole range of different um, aspects. It's very, very important. You have to take the time to understand each other. Um, there are several challenges. A uh, key challenge at the moment that some of you might recognise is, is how other legislation then impacts into the very work of that co-governance model. But if you've picked up anything from me and you've seen the structure of how the, our co-governance model or our river forum where it sits you'll see that legislation can come out, but basically it just becomes another part of the legislation that the, that the Rangataiki River Forum has to understand and then has to see how it's going to affect their purpose. The legislation doesn't drive the forum. The forum will drive the legislation as to how successful and where it's going to go. Uh, there's also a comment in there about the appreciation of what toll it takes on, on iwi. Over my time working for Toi Moana, um, various iwi capability and capacity have been, has been a range of um, capability and, and capacity. And so you have to um, appreciate that and understand that and figure through ways to actually um, create an environment where you are building capacity and capability. And it's not just iwi either, it's also local authorities. Uh, we have a lot to learn and understand as well. But again, you have to just make sure that you appreciate that and you take the time to achieve it. Um, if you don't uh, understand it or don't appreciate it, it just becomes another one of those rubs that affects everybody. Uh, there's some more challenges there. Sorry, I've, uh, I'm speeding up a little bit. I want to get to the last few words. <coughs> to be honest, the benefits, greater breadth of input into policy, building relationships, I've mentioned that, forum to progress, uh, often align values. Now, we had a good question about values before. What we've found through developing Te Ara Whanui is that the values of iwi, the values of the uh, Toi Moana and its uh, long-term plan community outcomes uh, and its own community, in a sense, are not too distinct. Different things. They actually form up into one uh, key element. It's really just how it translates down and how it's done. But if you have that singular focus, which can come from a strategy for what you're trying to achieve, it's, it should work. Um, I put one thing here at the bottom too, collaborative work effort combination of resources. The Rangataiki is a quarter or just under of the Bay of Plenty. It's going to take all of the forum members to participate in that from a resourcing perspective to a funding perspective to an everything perspective to actually enable us to actually essentially deliver to its purpose. It's not a Toi Moana alone 
driven sense of responsibility. It is a collective. And that's one of the things that my current chair has been working on uh, over her time as chair to really foster that understanding because it's not, it's not embedded. You've got to really foster that understanding, particularly with uh, a, a post-treaty settled iwi where there's different focuses. Oh, I did it again. Now I just want to come down to the four last slides with regards to these words being essentially from my chair uh, and while she may uh, growl at me for putting them forward, I felt that they actually stopped me talking about bureaucratic and corporate stuff and put me into the headspace which might be more familiar for you. So in a sense these are her words as much as they are mine. And she's listed up there uh, five key things for her as part of this four, four slide show. Socialising, getting to know each other, information, getting to know the issues, prioritising, getting to know what matters to whom, values, getting to know what is important to us, and structure, getting to know how we work. Very important. Understanding the extent of these issues and learning about the association's other and other uh, individuals and groups is one way of navigating through uh, uh, the business of co-governance. We need to learn more about our communities that live, work and play in the catchment. We need to learn more about how collaboration and resource knowledge, etc., is going to be appreciated. We need to learn to have more brave conversations. We need to understand that the goal is different, but how we may get there might be by many different pathways, not necessarily driven by the fact that the forum exists in a council <coughs> setting and it's a council pathway. We need to take ownership and responsibility for the environment. How will we know that the health and well-being of the catchment is enhanced? Will science tell us? Will cultural practice tell us? Will <coughs> communities tell us? The river will tell us. The birds, the animals and the insects will tell us. Our biggest challenge is to listen, watch, pay attention and take action. We need to reconnect. We need to reconnect and stay reconnected with nature. And finally, this is a scene at the river mouth of the Rangataiki, uh, a place called Thornton. In many ways this is also a picture of any activity found around the country, but it is a metaphor for the River Forum. <coughs> the focus of everyone is in the picture is on their job, fishing. They have their resources needed to do the job. They are all aware of what is going on around them and that they have the same purpose in mind. The conditions are right to achieve their purpose. The parallels to the Forum are there. Kia ora. Simon Ming, just one question. How many chairs are there? There's one chair, Rangataiki River Forum chair, and a deputy chair. Uh, we also have an alternate to each member. So uh, when we hold hui, it's not just the uh, forum members, there are alternates as well. I will deliver it to the chair. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. For anyone that has uh, any burning questions to have accorded or to Simon or any of uh, any of our other speakers, we are having a cup of tea after this. Um, fine. But again, feel free to ask while the or well, the presentations are, are, occurring, are occurring. And just a reminder also to identify yourself to those people that are, uh, that are watching on the live stream. Um, but yeah, awesome, awesome presentation, Simon. I love the, the, the cordial around having brave conversations because that's what it's about. It's about having brave, strong, robust conversations that may end up butting heads. But as long as those conversations are, uh, honour the mana of everybody inside of that room and the, and the person delivering that message and the people receiving that message, then we can kind of, then we can move forward. Um, I'd like to introduce our next speaker, uh, Toro Waka from Hawke's Bay Regional Planning Committee. Uh, Toro Waka is 
the co-chair of the Hawke's Bay Regional Planning Committee along with Rex Grain, the chair of the Hawke's Bay Regional Council. He is the chairperson of Ngāti Pahauera Development Trust based in Mohaka, <coughs> Ropung. The Hawke's Bay Regional Planning Committee oversees the review and development of the regional policy statement and regional plans for the Hawke's Bay region, as required under the Resource Management Act of 1991. It is a redress component of the treaty settlement process and tangata whenua representation comes from treaty settlement groups within the HBRC region. It has an equal number of regional councillors and tangata whenua group representatives. This committee is the co-governance group for the management of natural resources in Hawke's Bay. Ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, toro wāka. Well, Jason has actually given, delivered most of my, um, of my message today, and uh, so that gives me license to go other places. <laughs> So, um, you'll see a photo come up shortly, and it's a photo of um, a gathering back in uh, about the 1840s, around about that. And in those days, uh, resource people who were interested in resource management, they went to the pa and they talked to the rangatira. And in those days, those rangatira as far as they were concerned, those were, those, those were their rivers. That was their uh, kaimuna. That was like, their maunga. And um, so there's been a bit of a reverse, you might say, of things. And uh, sometimes you have to be frank in your, you know, I refer to the brave conversations of the previous speaker in terms of how you get the message across that you you're not just a stakeholder at the, at, the, at the meeting, you are a treaty party. So I use the illusion, oh, not the illusion. Um, I use the example of something I saw on TV quite recently. It was an article about, or well, a TV session on, about elderly abuse. There was an old man who had a nice house, and there was a young boy who he noticed living rough. So he asked this young boy, oh, yeah, come and stay with me. After a while, the young boy moved his uh, girlfriend in and they got too familiar with the place and they kicked the old fellow into the back room. Then he got hold of the old man's credit card and, um, it, and it wasn't until uh, someone noticed that there was something wrong that they got onto the law and that issue was uh, brought to the attention of the law and resolved. So I use that example in front of our regional council because I said, that is how we feel. We feel abused. Like in that here, we, 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 we ask invited people into our country, into our communities, usually share our resources, but now, in our, in our law here, we've got polluted lakes, we've got Rivers you can't swim in, let alone drink the water. Um, we've got lots of issues of where the resource that we have shared has been disrespected. So, um, and then we've got these other people, uh, fish and game and all that, and they think that the rivers are their playground. 
okay? They can do what they like on them, jet boats, uh, take charge of everything. Um, one of the, originally, um, they were the Climatisation <laughs> Society and they wanted to get rid of all eels in the rivers. So, you know, this is a culture of, of this particular group. So, uh, our river is uh, uh, the Mohaka River, and um, well, our main river anyway. And we had the Climatisation Society in those days, they wanted to put a conservation order on our river. And we thought, well, who, who are you? Who are you people? <laughs> So that sort of started, and then there were other issues of degradation with forestry, so uh, we had a hearing in terms of the planning committee, and then we filed our claim in, in terms of uh, the Waitangi Tribunal. Interestingly enough, Ngāti Pāhawera, we didn't <coughs> sign any treaty, so I think the Crown was quite um, pleased that we uh, put in a treaty claim because it gave them an opportunity to rope us into their system. Um, anyway, so we've had a settlement, five years now, and uh, one of, an aspect of that settlement was that we wanted our tinoranga to the tongue over our river, and the best example model that they could put up was this co-governance model. Uh, so initially they offered us a, a rivers board which didn't quite work for us because there were other iwi at the top of our river. Um, there were other rivers, other tributaries that run into the Mohaka. And it, there's no point in us having good systems in our area when we can get pollution from the top. There's a lot of dairy, there's dairy farms up in that uh, Tahalua area. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of logging. So um, we, we said, no, it's, if this one work for us, um, but then the council and the crown clicked that um, if they're going to have all these settlements and different rivers boards, it's going to be a very complex issue. So what they did was they decided to form um, a co-governance uh, committee or a regional planning committee over all of the rivers in the Hawke's Bay district. So there was dialogue with the other claiming groups who came on board, or some of them, um, and others who came later, well they just had to fit into the model, um, and then in 19, uh, 2015 there was Hooks Bay Regional Planning Committee Act. Uh, am I supposed to click this one? <laughs> okay, so the purpose of that act was to improve current offender involvement in development and review of the documents prepared in accordance with the Resource Management Act. And um, through our joint planning committee. <coughs> so the idea was to provide the opportunity to develop an ongoing treaty partnership relationship. That has been embraced by some of the um, members of our regional council, but you know you always get some who want to stick with the old ways. So we have an equal number of regional councillors and equal number of Tangata Whenua representatives. We operate through uh, consensus decision making and there's no casting vote by the chair. <coughs> um, we all know that consensus decision making is a tough one. Um, so there's nothing wrong with ideals. Uh, up here. It's all work in progress. So all committee members have full speaking and voting rights. Uh, the RPC has a rotating chair, sometimes I chair, sometimes uh, our other chairman of the regional council, Rex Graham, sometimes he chairs. Uh, there's a high threshold in terms of voting. Um, so, yeah, as I say, the consensus thing. It requires a lot of discussion and when you have issues that have limited you have to get it done within a certain time frame that can cause some issues. Uh, the com committee requires uh, actually it's a 75% participation for the quorum, and that's quite high. Uh, but what <coughs> that does do it, it makes sure that a small amount of people can't make a decision. Um, it's detrimental to the 
majority for the duration. Um, we don't have to have, the Māori members don't have to have a, a elections other than through our own payment groups. We're a permanent committee of the Hawke's Bay Regional Council. In terms of some of the Fenner report uh, support, uh, we currently receive meeting fees and our remuneration is currently being reviewed. Uh, we have two independent technical advisors at our disposal, so they give us, well they save us doing a lot of work and uh, give us good advice. So some of them had, well one is uh, um, from uh, Ngai Kahu, so he's got a lot of um, expertise in that what's going on in those areas. And we have another another resource management consultant who I think he had something to do with the Waikato area as well. Um, Billy, Billy Bruff. So they, they help give us um, a good steal on some issues. One of the problems with the advisors is if you've got lazy <coughs> members, then they will listen to the advisor rather than actually think through the issues. So it's one of those things you've got to weigh up. Um, we don't want the tail wagging the dog. I think the Whenua Secretariat, that's been discussed. So, we, uh, so instead of me having to do this PowerPoint, I'm going to get someone to do it for me. We meet independent of the Hawke's Bay Regional Councils as they before the four RPC meetings. So we discuss and we analyse. Sorry about my stuff. Uh, <laughs> things done in the in the dead of night. Sometimes you suppose not that good. So, <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah. So we um, we do have a, a good opportunity. So when we do go to the regional council meeting, we are actually. We actually know what we're discussing rather than not knowing what meeting we turned up for. Um, and that's probably one of our issues, is um, everyone's so busy. So there's nine Tana Tawhina representatives. There's Mana Ahuriri, which is a Napier people. Tera Tana Taipina, hastening down to Takapo. Ngāti Hene Uru, they're up in, the, up in the hills on the way to Taupo. Mauna Haruru Tangitū, between um, <coughs> uh, Pahaura and... Um, well, they're around the Tutu area, Tāng Wheel. Toi Kura Waitaro Mōna, they're the real funny people, ourselves. Tato Tato, the Wairo area. We have a rep from Tūwhara Tōa, and uh, we had a rep from Tūhoi, but um, they're in so many different groups, <coughs> so many different councils, they have a bit of, you yeah, know, they've got, they've got some challenges there. Um, but we try and keep in contact with them. Uh, this is the regional council area, and you can see it's made up of the Warrow district, the Hastings district, um, <coughs> and the central Hooks Bay district, and they have uh, got one rep from Warrow district, we've got four from the Hastings district, uh, one from, oh, hang on, three from the Napier district, and one from the central Hooks Bay district. Um, if I said it right, it comes out to nine. <laughs> so there's nine on each side. Um, so the purpose and roles as it has already been explained here. Um, uh, yeah. We spend a lot of time on the on the strategies, the policies, etc. I think but there are there are some issues and all of that, and that um, they are very. Uh, management led, I suppose. A lot of the, a lot of the mm. tuckers that come to the table, we haven't quite got ourselves organised enough that we are putting up our own agenda items. We do raise them, we do put agenda items up, but uh, we've only just got our technical crew with us, so we're not quite ready to be pushing our things and our, our technical stuff at a higher level. Um, one of the issues associated with that is um, you can get bamboozled with a lot of scientific stuff and I take um, note in terms of how you know, we need to be looking at Well, we need to be acknowledging that Māori have got their own science 
And, and one of the things I said to our council was, you know, I take a lot of advice from a guy by the name of Bob Dylan. He said, you don't need to be a weather man to know which way the wind blows. <laughs> we don't need scientists to tell us that that lake is polluted. If, I can't, if a bird won't sit on it, there's something wrong with it. <laughs> you, know? you, you can't catch white bait, you can't catch eels, you know, something wrong with that water. So um, they waste a heap of money you know, on scientists. I've got nothing against scientists, but they say it's a history of failed theories, so... Um, <laughs> <laughs> we, need to, we need to actually, um, yeah, have a bit more faith in ourselves and what we know, and, as he said, what we can see. You know. um, so we, what, we've done a lot of complaining about the reports that we've been given. You know, just these thick documents you're supposed to understand and digest in uh, five minutes or something. So we've, we've asked for succinct reports, two or three pages on an on a issue. You can get through that, you can understand it, you know what you're voting on. Uh, there's also, in any the council, there's interest groups, I suppose. And somehow or other, they've got influence in, uh, in what comes to the table. And they have influence in terms of where the priorities are in terms of spending. <coughs> so we've just wasted all, you know, heaps of about $40 million on a, on a, so what do you call it, a feasibility study. Mm -hmm. How do, you, how do you waste 40, 40 million dollars on a feasibility study on a looking at whether there's a merits in a dam or not? Um, so that's I think that's been kicked to touch. Did um, you guys support it? What's that? Did you guys support it? No. Well, one of the I think one of the Taifinua supported it. They um, they were sold the thing about these jobs involved, but you know, you know that's uh, not really a, a reality. Um, so we make recommendations to the council. Um, we get all these papers up, the recommendations at the bottom, and you either vote for them or you don't. Excuse me, Tom. Yep. Kia ora, um, just with regard to, um, I'm seeing the RMA coming up quite yeah, quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just with, with regard to that, um, I mean, there's a lot of words being used around the RMA yeah, and yeah, your participation. Yeah. Do you actually participate in the resource consent activities? We, we, I, the issues associated with resource management are identified, yeah. and we develop long-term plans and policies in regard to how those will be managed in the future. Once those decisions are made, then the budgets have to be allocated. But, you know, we all know that the Resource Management Act came out in 1991, full of weasel words that they could <laughs> circumnavigate. And, um, you know, you would think that with all, uh, with all the things about looking after the environment and all that, they're in that act, that things would have improved. But everything's gone backwards. We all know that. In our area anyway. <coughs> the waterways, etc. So, yeah. So, that's so that's we... Like so that's right. why that's why we've got this joint planning committee, because we want to turn things around. Right. Yeah. So I say to them, I'm not here to make friends with you people. I'm here to participate. Do things... But I think we think we should be improved. Um, so all that, yep. <laughs> um, so we, um, we, we, we are also, we're trying to integrate ourselves into the uh, regional council as well, rather than just, see resource management covers a wide area. They try and just stick it to, they try and confine it to um, just rivers and that kind of stuff. But the resource management that covers economic development and all sorts of stuff. So we're saying, oh well, you know, we need to be on that committee, we need to be on that committee. So we've got two representatives on the subcommittee that appoints the hearings committee members to hear plan and policy submissions or environmental court stuff. Uh, we need our people on the, on those on those panels. We've got uh, three members on the biosecurity working party 
we appoint one member to the strategic and corporate committee. We need to know what's going on behind the scenes, where all the money's being spent, um, and have a say in where that goes. Uh, we have one member on the environmental services committee as well. well if you've got people on those committees, it does also help you in terms of your monitoring uh, to ensure that the resources that need to go to places or the things that need to happen are happening. So decision process issues. In the event that the council does not adopt all or any part of any of the proposed regional plan, regional policy statements, plan changes or plan variations or other recommendations, Council shall refer such documentation in its entirety back to our committee. So that's supposed to be the process of recycling. If we make a recommendation and it goes to the regional council and they don't agree with it, it has to come back to us. In theory. <coughs> so the issue is um, when uh, they're in a position where they have to make an agreement in a hurry, if there's something some time constraint or other, um, they may choose to make a decision uh, that counters the recycling. Um, when we just had a recent um, example of that in regards to the water conservation order um, that uh, Fish and Game put on uh, the uh, Nagarota River, uh, whereby uh, there wasn't an agreement, but the council went ahead and um, Opposed. So um, the Act provides no guidance on what the Council can or cannot do if no recommendation is made. Potentially it poses an issue in terms of the consensus approach. Um, and it faces consensus <coughs> issues. So um, at the end of the day, we can focus on problems or we can try and work on the solutions. So, uh, you know, there's general goodwill in terms of our council. Uh, our um, chair, Rex Graham, is committed to enhancing the partnership, which is a good, yeah, a good thing. And uh, at the end of the day, we want our mukos to be all happy. So, um, Hawkesbury Regional Council challenges, economic drivers versus environmental. We've got a lot of uh, horticultural activity down there. Um, <coughs> a lot of forestry activity, so they, they are people on the radar. Um, we need a mind shift in terms of regarding us as treaty partners and not just stakeholders. The conservation order issue, that's why Rex is in here today, it's a big, uh, yeah. If that conservation order goes in, down our way, it'll probably uh, shut down half the <coughs> economic growth in the area because it's, uh, it's reliant on um, re restricting the amount of water that can be taken out of that river, which all these uh, grape growers, um, orchardists, etc. need. So water storage, that's a big issue. Um, for me, I think it's about the real issue is using water wisely. There's a lot of practices that go on that, um, and a lot of it is associated with people trying to get quota for water. They have a, they have a license to take X amount of um, litres. They don't need it at all, but they turn the taps on and <coughs> it goes on there. The water goes to waste. I, 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 um, I've got a little block where I raise maize and um, I don't use any water, but I've got a bore. The guy down the road there, he's got these things pumping all the time. You know? So a lot of the issues are why is water use? Um, and uh, maybe better use of technology. There's lots of good technology out there in terms of how you can t clean up water. Um, and uh, probably the best, people, <coughs> the best people in the world to learn from about water is probably the Israelis, because they, they've got, uh, yeah, because of the climate, the place they live in, the water, yeah, they know how to look after water. Uh, oil and gas exploration, yeah, it's a big issue down our way. We, we live in a high, uh, seismic region, high, you know, high ac activity. And I noticed you guys had a bit of a couple of shake-ups last night here as well. Um, 
One of the issues associated with the, the drilling, etc., is that the casings that they utilise, the <coughs> lifespan of those casings is not a is not a very long uh, not a long life. Some of them don't even last twenty five years. So you know you get a you get a hole put down a mile down under the air under the sea. If that casing breaks, there's no way anyone's going to get down there and fix it. We're going to end up with situations like uh, Mexico. And when you've got high seismic activity, the likelihood of those casings being busted is, is a lot. Um, well, that's only my version. You, know, you can check it out yourself. I try to get uh, advice from our scientists in terms of the lifespan of uh, casings, but. They said they didn't have the information, so I had to go and ask Uncle Google. <laughs> you told me. So you really challenge us, um, despite what people think. We don't always agree. So there's remuneration issues, which we're working on, support issues we're working on. Uh, there's political, all those groups I mentioned from here, those are the people who turn up their political appointments. They're going to make sure that they've got a place. They're not necessarily, you know, I know there's a live stream, I'm probably going to get in trouble, but they're not necessarily <laughs> match fit. Um, and they're not necessarily able to make it, to make the time commitments. And you're not, the head's not necessarily there either. You know, it's on another copa. So we've got to get past that point and get rid of people like me from those committees so we can get people with the technical level, technical skills, you might say. Um, we have an issue in terms of communication, the RMA issues with Fano. Yeah, we go to meetings, we say what we say we don't necessarily get back to our people to check out whether that's what they want. <coughs> uh, in, like in Paraguay, we have our information sharing hui and other hui, that's about the only opportunity we have. Or we utilise our Facebook page, or we utilise our, our, um, yeah, our other, other, other mechanisms, like our website. Um, we've got standing orders. We use the regional council ones as a guideline, you might say, and then we just add our other stuff in. We haven't quite got to the formalisation of what it's going to be at the end of the day. So, um, yeah, nothing's fixed in the, you know, we'll be at this for, um, what, a hundred and whatever years, and uh, there's still little tweaks that have to be worked on. So, uh, just like the shag, you know, he appears to be asleep, but then he, he can move very rapidly to get what he needs. Um, so, tēnā tātā. Tēnā tātā. Tēnā tātā. Note that um, holding meetings in rooms like this, uh, you don't really connect with the people, eh? Um, and I, there's no criticism of this, but this, that's the culture. You know, all the all the hui are held in the council chambers, or the, even at a marae, and half the people who belong to that hapu or whatever don't even know that the hui's on. So. Because the communication <laughs> issues are, uh, yeah, need a bit of a development. So, um, in terms of engagement, I think that that needs to happen through our own mediums, our own like our iwi Facebook pages, our iwi hui, and we can. I know that our young people are passionate. You know, even uh, we've got a very strong pig hunters club, and they're very noisy people. They they've got focus on issues, 
uh, in terms of political stuff. Uh, they um, held a big hui one day about the 1080 drop and one 1080 in, uh, in, our, in our rohe and um, yeah, we said, okay, yeah, that's what you guys want, that's what we're going to do. So we don't have 1080 now, we've got to just sign a, we've just signed a contract with TB Osprey to do all our um, uh, possum control, pest control uh, by traps, etc. And that's given about 10 of our young people a bit of mahi. So, so, so yeah, I can't, it's a hard question that one about how you actually mobilise your people. How would you relate and uh, rate your, your relationship with the Hawke's Bay District Council? Well, they have to put up with me. So, uh, <laughs> I think um, I think we are slowly. It's by. Well, I don't actually hold back in terms of how I feel when I am, when I'm at meetings. I think people have got to know. People have got to know that this is who you are. This is what you want. And it's only by being honest that. Uh, you get to um, they get to have an understanding of you and you get to have an understanding of where they're coming from and I think it's only by sharing those sort of those sorts of thoughts that where we can actually start to come together um, I don't know whether I've answered the question but I'm, I think it's all work in progress and it's all about uh, engagement awesome presentation, Matua. Took some um, really good, really good kiwaha away from uh, uh, from that presentation. <laughs> Uh, the, you don't need to be a weatherman to so know which way the wind blows and, and what was it? All of that, all of that there, all of that there. <laughs> Man, I'm going to use that in my next presentation. Uh, Fano, our next presentation is from, um, is from Tipa Mahuta and Marae Tukere from Waikato River Co-Governance. Uh, the Waikato Regional Council Deputy Chair, Deputy Chairs, Tipa Mahuta and Marai Tukere, Tukere the co-chair of the Waiora Healthy Rivers Plan Change Co-Governance Committee with Waikato Regional Council and Ngāti Raukawa, Tūwhairetua, Maniapoto Māori Trust Board and Te Arawa River Iwi Trust will present on their experiences of co-governance in the context of the Waikato River. Waikato Regional Council was involved in a new era of Crown Iwi co-management of the Waikato River catchment. The co-management arrangements include joint management, agreements between multiple iwi, and the regional council on the way that they will work together. Um, ladies and gentlemen, Tipa Mahuta and Marae Tukere. Te reira e tia haere o Waikato ko tau mai ki Waimanui a koutou. Hei uh, hapa i ngā kōrero o te rā nei, nō reira ka tau nā mana ki tanga ki runga a tātou katoa i tēnei rā. Um, we want to get right to it, but we thought we'd better introduce ourselves first because you can often forget to do that. Uh, my name is Tipa Mahuta, this is my second term as a regional council on the Waikato Regional Council, and for some reason they keep making me deputy chair. I think it's their cunning strategy to wrap me up, but hey, why? Um, I went to regional council from Iwi, 15 years in Waikato Iwi governance, and so I still held those hats as well. So between Marae and I, because she holds multiple hats as well, we both sit on different times the council side of the table, mainly me, and other times on the iwi side of the table. Ai tēnā koutou katoa, ko marae tūkere tōku ingoa, ko Tūranga Waiwai tōku marae, no Ngāri Wahi a hau. Um, I tip is right, so tip is a Waikato Regional Council. I work for the Waikato District Council, and we're both board members for Waikato Tainui. So yeah, we do flip-flops depending on what committee we're sitting on today. So um, I guess without further ado, and yes, we're going to change the furniture because 
this is slightly uncomfortable, so we're going to sit down <laughs> and um, just have a call it all. So I'm very impressed by the presentations we've you. seen this morning. Aroha mai whanau, after the beautiful kai that Robin um, hosted us last night, we went back to the hotel room and put some slides together. So these are just little um, prompts for us. So hopefully we cover off some things that are of interest uh, to you in this all. We're going to start with a little video. And um, then Tip is going to talk about the context for that video. Fresh, clean water. Water clean enough to swim in. And to collect the <coughs> crop. Water so clean you can see your toes. It's essential for the continued success of our region. For the rivers themselves and for all the living things they sustain. Flowing from Lake Taupo to Mamawao te Ika Maui, the heart of the North Island, the Waikato River is joined by the Waipa River at Ngaroa Wahi. The journey continues to Port Waikato and out to the sea. Along the way, they say a chief exists at every bend. Waikato Tanifaro, Hepiko He Tanifa, Hepiko He Tanifa. These rivers are our region's arteries and taonga, but they're under threat. From what? Wow. Nitrogen levels in both rivers have been slowly but steadily increasing. Phosphorus levels increase as the Waikato River progresses. Sediment levels are high in the lower reaches of both rivers. Bacteria levels in the Waipa are high and in the Waikato they're moderately elevated downstream of Karapi. If we do nothing, levels of these contaminants will slowly but steadily rise and it will become much harder to fix the problem they cause. That's a risk we're not prepared to take. So in 2012, the Healthy Rivers Waiora project began. With such complex issues to address, those most affected have developed a solution. Together, 24 people representing a diverse range of sectors and the community have developed new policy supported by technical specialists. And from that work, an 80-year staged approach has been recommended. The first 10 years of this proposed plan change involves actions to bring about 10% of the change between the water's current state and the 80 year targets. There's a lot of good work that's already been done by many to improve water quality in our rivers. The changes we are looking to introduce are about everyone playing their part. This is not a quick fix, we are in it for the long haul. But these changes will ensure the Waikato and the Waipa rivers are swimmable and food can be gathered from them for farming. These are your rivers, this is your plan, make sure you have your say. Okay, so um, we wanted to use a real project that we've been using, um, applying our co-governance practice to, give you a real-time analysis of how well that went in the challenges before us, before going into some of our JMA arrangements. So basically, uh, this is us trying to get ahead of the, oh, meet the challenge, basically, the, the key difference, I guess, of the JMA arrangement you heard today, two other instruments that exist in Waikato. We have a regional policy statement called the Vision and Strategy for the River that all our local authorities use as their guiding principle. So that vision and strategy has the, is the equivalent of the national policy statement fresh water in our region and the measures are harder than the national policy statement in the rest of the country. So again, our, um, some of our stakeholders feel doubly aggrieved because not only do they have to improve water quality but it's to a higher standard than the rest of the country. But you know, we're all into that. Um, so the goal of our council was to actually live the co-governance walk and engage iwi in this. Uh, project to see how we might co-design it, uh, see it through, and at the moment we'll, we'll talk a bit about where we're going to from there. Why? Because the vision and strategy required an action plan. So treaty settlement propelled this forward. We're a little bit ahead of some of the other parts of the motu because of our treaty, settle our treaty settlement's 10 years old next year. But in other ways we're a little bit further behind because of the impact of dairy, big forest, uh, big gumboots really in our region, not, not just like other regions. Um, so we just want to drop into, so that was a process. We invited our River Iwi to the table. 
um, I'll let Mata go, well, we're going to co team So Mata represents that conversation, even though we sit on the same iwi board. She came in as the River Iwi, I was sitting on the other side of the table as the council law, uh, treaty partner, not bad, eh? And, uh, but what council did, and what it, what I wanted to bring today, maybe a different discussion, um, and again, I'm only a second term councillor, so I'll own that when my council watches this video, um, is that we had crafted a whole lot of the project before we, were, we even arrived in the room. Yeah, we decided what the question would be, how it would be asked, how long it would take, and how much money we would apply to it. Because that's what we do, we plan for stuff. And councils, and there are awesomeness, have been doing that for some hundreds of years, and somebody told me it takes nine years in a council cycle for life to change. So there's been about 20 cycles of nine years. So it's a hard habit to break, but we pretended it was co-governance when we invited them into the room. We said, here, this is what's for dinner, you're eating it, and you're gonna enjoy it. Yeah? So um, again, we, a lot of questions. Uh, we didn't also, although we went into the co-governance process at a, at a technical level, by inviting the community into the room, these stakeholder working groups, and no doubt you've all experienced that and represented your sector really well. Uh, but um, basically we had crafted how it was all going to happen by the time we came into the discussion. So they, I'm not sure if you felt that you had much room to move at the beginning. <laughs> 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 Pretty much, yeah, so, yeah. yeah, it was a very um, structured, you know, that's what council is though, I work for a council so I know how structured it is and I understand the process, but when Iwi came to the table, so that was five, Waikato Tainui, Maniapoto Māori Trust Board, Ngāti Tūwhare Toa, Ngāti Raukawa Trust Board and Tarot, Te Arawa Rizuri Trust, pretty much they said, here's the box, you know, this is how it's going to roll. Yeah. And we said, well, hang on a minute, we haven't even had any input into how, how you fellas have planned it. <coughs> Can we have that conversation first? Yeah. Then, then we found, while we were having that conversation, we needed to take a step back ourselves, the Five River Iwi, and have a conversation amongst ourselves about what we expected of each other first, what our uh, values were, what our, you know, what we were all around the table for, what were our bottom lines before we could have that ca uh, conversation with the council? So that's what we had to do. So, you know, I, I guess the, the lesson there is that um, it takes time even for ourselves to get our ducks in the line. And I don't think we, we're still, you know, we're halfway through, it's going to be notified uh, in, the in the new year. And we've still got some big conversations that we need to have in that, in that whole experience. So yeah, while we walked into this thing that was like this, we started to go, hang on a minute, we, this, yeah. is not, this is not comfortable for us. And so that took a lot of time. Yeah. You heard him say 2012, it's 2017. <laughs> and that's how long we've been in the conversation. And the other, um, you know, with 24 other groups, with their aspirations and their requirements, and Fish and Game was mentioned by Toro in the last presentation, yeah, there's a whole lot of wants. Um, and so we've had to, um, I guess, not manage it, but just, but just be aware that, um, uh, yeah, we've, we've, we've just got to be patient. We've, there's a lot of conversations going on, and our biggest conversation, and I think Toro brought it up too, is our own conversation with our, our whanau is to make sure we go back and say, Fano, this is what's happening. <coughs> Nobody wants to listen to us talk about plan changes. <laughs> oh my God, but boring, boring. But you know, if, if we don't talk to our Fano about what's happening, then we can't take that to the table. So all of that meant a whole lot of long time and a lot of conversations, planning language, yeah. and yeah. Ooh. So yeah. So I just wanted to say, so we spent a lot of effort on the 20, uh, the process around our collaborative stakeholder group, their storming, their workshopping, all these independent people to help them speak from their sector interests comfortably and, and are having those uncomfortable conversations. We didn't spend any time on the co-governance committee doing any of that work. We assumed that they would just fall into their co-governance roles, put that hat on and automatically know, one, how to have regard for someone with different values. Mm -hmm. Or different systems of operating, but none of that is natural. Yeah, it's it's not inherent in local government currently. It will need to be learnt. Mm -hmm. So I get a little bit, you know, that's the iwi in me, though. When they say all oh, the capacity growth is at the on the iwi side of the table, because I tell you what, local government could learn a whole lot of EQ from iwi. 
that's what we hold. We, we are instinctively in touch with how people are. Our local government is great at process. Yeah? We can get to a destination. It might not be where everyone else wants to get to, but we can get people there. But I think um, there's learning on both sides, and it doesn't come with just signing a piece of paper or entering into a process. Mm -hmm. And it's very human and very yeah. fallible. But, you know, it was, it was nice for us to be sitting on our side, of the, on the iwi side of the table and watching the bad behaviour of some of their councillors. <laughs> we don't behave like that in public. We wait till the door shut. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, <laughs> And I think these have been touched on by both the previous speakers. Um, yeah, resourcing was a big one. We had to have, we had to push council to actually understand that they have way more capacity than us. So they had, I don't know, how many staff oh, working on the room? Yeah, we, we each we had one. <laughs> Me and my, you know, our environmental manager. That was it. And so we said we can't do it. Like we can't, we can't participate properly. And um, <coughs> was right. We found somebody who basically <coughs> ran the project for us. And if we didn't have that person, it wouldn't have worked. Because you know, we like you know, you all know we're all in demand. Everybody wants something from us. This is the, one of the biggest projects in the Waikato region. So we had to be there. We had to be up with the plate. Mm. But at the same <coughs> time, everybody else still wants everything from us. So that was a lesson. In terms of reference, is very important. Like I said, in terms of the way we were, um, we had to have converse, conversations about alternates, who they could be, so we had to have a terms of reference so we were clear on, on how it was going to roll. Um, <coughs> we kept reminding the council that yes, we're sitting at the table with you, but don't forget we still have our joint management agreements, that if we're not happy with the process here, we can fall back on those. Those were always going to be, because those were legislative um, documents. Yeah, now I'm expert, I suppose, but there's a whole lot of other lessons, but those are some of the ones that popped into my head. Yeah, two of the probably the key lessons from the council side of the table were that when we needed to have the resourcing conversation, um, I think we shied away from it rather than going right into it. What does that mean? For how long? You know, we could have taken a proactive stance and not lost some months on that, mm -hmm. and we could have had a better receptive kind of operating principle around Mato Ranga Māori. So, you know, I know it's hot and everyone's trying to define it, but that's not our decision as council. That lives with the partner. Mm -hmm. We don't have to. We just have to have a great interaction with it, relationship, and provide for it. Hey, we don't have to have Mate Ranga Māori experts on stuff. That's what we bring in the door. Yeah? But I think we think we've got to own everything, because that's what we're used to doing when we overplan everybody. And your fun and your laughter too, see? Um, but some other things, that, some habits that I think we had to kick out in this project especially, and another one, and I'm glad to see Paul Beverly here because he was on Tai Timu Tai Pari Tai Ao, you saw the mistakes we made in that process. <coughs> but um, there's a new, so council is used to its RMA LGA roles. Co-governance is different. It's a different kind of rangatira, tanga, rangatira space. And um, it's not collaboration, eh? it's not consultation. It's not partnership in the Wellington way. So it's how to have that conversation at a local level because the treaties come home from Wellington, but it's got no real context to live at home yet <coughs> amongst us and local government. So that's the hard work. That's the long game, I think, that uh, everybody's been pointing to. Mm -hmm. But um, in our settlement, we, we said JMAs, which is where we've landed as an iwi, uh, was, was a starting point, not the ending point of the relationship with council. Yeah, so just wanted to make that one. So next steps on healthy rivers wild water? Yeah, yeah. Talk about Hayaki. Oh, do I? Oh, I will then. <laughs> okay, so despite all of our great combined effort of having the right iwi in the room and the right councils in the room, um, we left the iwi out <coughs> when we were going through their treaty settlement process. Um, you know, we didn't think we left them out, but they thought we left them out, so it's put another process in our process. Hence, we were going to notify by this month, now we're going out to early next year. But again, they weren't, they're not in the co-governance frame, so this is council speaking. Uh, so we're treating them under the RMA right for consultation. Yeah? Whether that's right or wrong will come out in the wash, because Hauraki will settle or not in 2018. Yeah? They're there we affected. Um, and definitely by the next plan change that we do. The next steps for our co-governance committee, however, is to choose the commissioners. And you would have thought that's a, you know, that's a pretty simple deal.
but it causes 10 hours of angst at my council every time we talk about it. <laughs> because these green Māoris might not pick anyone that likes farmers. <laughs> And yet, it's not even our decision. <laughs> we just make a recommendation based on, say, so they've, they've um, advertised the, the panel, is yeah. that how you call it? Of experts yeah. against some criteria. Yeah, and so they've put their names up, and then we'll, we'll, we'll look at those. Our managers will give us some, some steer, and we'll put a recommendation up to council. Now, council can't reject that. If they don't agree, they push it back down. And then we have another court at all, and we'll say probably the same thing again, back up. So yeah, um, it's but it's course I didn't re I didn't understand why it was causing so much angst. But they believe that we won't pick a balanced um, set of commissioners. I guess yeah. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, so notification the panel um, <coughs> and just probably another how many years they reckon? Oh, about another three to oh, well, council years. Eh? Council. So probably three years. Yeah. To see it start, our 10 year process. <laughs> I'm, I'm again, I'm so new, I'm, I'm not, tr um, everything seems like the slow, slow road to me. But in saying that, my expectation is we've had over a thousand submissions. Most of them are from Big Dairy, Big Hort. N n n you're, you're used to all of these uh, stakeholders. Uh, but what was nice to see was the uh, iwi view was already integrated into the project and a number of our other whānau participated in the submissions that maybe never would have had the iwi partners not been part of the project. So happy about that. Um, we expect more submissions on the small part that was left out and we expect more hurdles along the way. Mm, definitely. Yeah. I suppose the only other thing is that, oh, you know, we've been talking about science go outside and stand in the wind and you'll know which way it's blowing. Well, I'm not a scientist, so when I, I think in terms of balance on the um, on the co-governance group is, is some strong governance because you've got to stand your ground in that forum, but also if you have some technical expertise, that really does help. Because when they start talking about E. coli, you know, you've got to be able to take notice. So it's been invaluable having our ex experts there but in, yeah, I, I think Toro hit the nail on the head. Pick the right people yeah. um, for for the for the <coughs> um, project, and um, certainly that's something we'll be looking to do in the next round. Mm. But watch the space. There'll be more updates and more videos to, to follow. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, we thought we would jump into <coughs> joint management agreements, which came out of the settlement. So. Tip is going to start with Waikato Regional Council and Iwi in the region. Oh, I thought you were starting. Okay, me. Um, so our co-governance arrangements with Waikato are now 10 years old. Other Iwi came on stream after that. Uh, for, for the Regional Council, we have arrangements with Five River Iwi. Uh, a minimum of one, meet one, one meeting a year, in reality probably two. Uh, some of the real life issues we have is quorum, and that could be either side of the table depending on the priority that people give that committee. So again, it's all about who you choose and what compels them to be in the room and uh, what shames them for not arriving. <laughs> hey, if, you, if you can't carry it, well, stick will do. Um, the other thing is that we designed a lot of the preliminary agendas, the council, because as we do, we like planning for the world, even for things they didn't know they wanted. Um, <laughs> And then uh, uh, our enthusiasm gets a bit curved because then we say, no, actually, that's not our priority. Here it is here. How can that look like that? So, for example, this time round, we've said, oh, we want to do all this LTP planning with, these, with our five river area. I said, well, let's read their document before we go and talk to them. They published it five years ago. They already know what they want. Hey, let's go with, with that informed conversation in mind rather than, oh, let, let's have a cup of tea. Nice to know you. Ten cup of teas later, still asking you what you want, yeah? Because again, uh, we don't speak planning. The other thing uh, with our river, uh, we've just had a uh, five-year review of some of the settlement mechanisms and um, some of those inefficiencies around uh, how a lot of, not just our regional council, JMA, because all the other councils, even the district councils, have their JMA arrangements with their WES. How we can streamline it, make it more efficient, make it more meaningful for both parties. Yeah? And, and take on, take responsibility for the learning in our whole community. Because there's still a level of bias that including Māori means the rest of the community is lo losing something. Yeah? 
that inclusion means somebody is missing out on something. <coughs> it's not just a positive gain. You know, so we've, there's a lot of educating that must be on the council side of the table, because then we already know where they sit. <laughs> yeah, and and that's been probably been my biggest job as in, in my role as deputy chair, going to our stakeholders and doing that. So yeah, I'm just talking quickly about as a tribal member. Yeah, tribal. We've got three joint management agreements for the Waikato River with the Waikato Regional Council, the Waikato District Council, and Hamilton City Council. We meet at least twice a year with these councils. <coughs> um, I guess the, the learning is that relationship building has taken too long. We didn't have, we didn't, <coughs> at the start, we didn't set the measures then. We just started to get to know each other. That was, you know, half of that was like our history and... Yeah, um, why were we even in the room? Yeah, what do we, how, how did we get to come here? What are we going to talk about? And educating our count, the councillors and um, as a person who works for council, yes, that was part of my um, role, um, but I guess one of the positives is that apart from the river, we're having much broader conversations now, um, that relationship is, is, is quicker, um, in, in some areas now, you know, the mayor can just ring up Ra when it was Rahui and say, you know, I've got a problem, can, you, can we have a conversation, so it's not just the river we're talking about, it's economic development, it's um, infrastructure, it's um, water, you know, with the water issues. So that's a positive. And I think I think um, a positive too for the councillors <coughs> is that they're not scary people. They're not going to walk in here and demand something. This is about what's good for Waikato. The iwi is good for the whole community. And growing that understanding has been, has been um, a real positive. Um, in terms of the five-year review at Waikato District Council, um, I guess what came out of that was that <coughs> as an, I, we all assumed that our staff knew what um, the mana o te awa, mana o te awa and mana whakahaere meant, but they didn't. So we shouldn't assume that anybody, our, anybody knows anything. We have to actually educate, support them in that learning. And um, yeah, so that was a pretty harsh lesson to learn five years later. They had known that in the, in the beginning we probably would have got somewhere quicker. Mm. But yeah, that whole um, now the conversations are starting to get more focused. But it shouldn't have taken shouldn't have taken five years. And I guess the only other elephant in the room is the role of the Waikato River Authority and how we make sure that um, what they're doing and what we're doing is all integrated and we're all working towards the same thing. We seem to we, we say we are, but there's no evidence of that. So yeah. Um, issues resolution. Yeah. How do you manage that? Do you have a so in terms of the JMAs, it's written into the JMAs that it's consensus decision making. And it's a dispute re re uh, resolution process, process. within yeah. the JMA. Yeah. <coughs> um, just want to touch on the Waikato of Authority. Again, it's a unique element of our settlement. Uh, it has the authority, uh, so its key role is only two really. <coughs> One is to uh, ensure that the vision and strategy is being adhered to by all the local authorities and to distribute Putia for the health and well-being of the river. Okay, so it's only got two jobs. Uh, the review of that entity was scathing. <laughs> they they, 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 they uh, broke a few hearts. They, they, they thought they were doing a really great job and the community didn't feel like that way. And so that, that's a co-governed entity. Crown appointments, five crown appointments, five iwi appointments. They administer uh, roughly $7 million a year for river-related projects and they're meant to monitor um, that local government uh, fulfilling their obligations, the vision and strategy. So it was the second job that everyone felt they weren't doing well. So it wasn't perceived that the money achieved for the river would all go to fund these local authority projects, because they already get rates, they should already be doing their job well. This was an actually to buy an advantage, uh, you know, and to stop the, the, the pollution and pr pretty much stabilise where we were. But what has happened is the biggest projects, um, and I can speak to that, one of the biggest projects being funded by the River Authority is a, a regional council project. Mm. And it's to restore the Waipa River. Now, our argument as councillors will bring that project, for, if we prioritise that in the first 10 years, you'll automatically see the difference at the Ngaroahia juncture of the Waipa and the Waikato River, mm. if we prioritise the Waipa. But in terms of whether that was the right place to start when they didn't have a strategy as the River Authority, they've only just got one, when they didn't have a monitoring regime, it's some of those learnings um, 
that we take into the rest of the development for the river. But River Authority are wiser for it. They got their hand slapped. They will be better at it going forward. Okay, I'll start with the first one, creating the right environment for co-governance. So to get to a co-governance page, you must let go of RMA and L LGA page. Yeah, because that's where we've lived for a long time. We're used to being treated like that, or not treated like that, or again, I've probably spent most of my life submitting to that. <laughs> yeah, But co-governance is meant to be the space that we can co-create, as something safe to talk about, and create a real different future. You know, And I'm not saying, because I never grew up saying I want to be in local government, but we could really transform our communities if we trust the co-governance space and we put enough effort and energy and goodwill into that, because it's different from RMA and LGAs. It provides a new opportunity <coughs> to our communities, but we must take it and be really brave yeah. and be out of the box and, say, and you know, set, the, set the expectations really high, because better to fail gloriously than achieve very little <laughs> over a long, long, long time. So that's the creating the right, and, and that all the le learning isn't on the iwi side of the table. Yes, when I went to council, I had to learn about the, uh, all the different bits of the acts and things like that, you know, to be a, a councillor. I don't expect my iwi partners to abide by our standing orders. They have their own tikanga to abide by. They can manage themselves if they play up. I don't have to manage that. They have their own processes for that. Why would I enforce my local government rules on them? As long as we don't have big fisty cuffs. No. And that's not, <laughs> that's not okay. But so what am I allowed to give away that doesn't need to be in co-governance, eh, that is a child of LGA, and what needs to be, what can we bring in there that is unique and can enhance the relationships? Yeah, <coughs> yeah. Um, and I suppose on the next point, and I sort of touched on it before, that um, you know, really understand what it is you want to achieve over, over time, set some milestones, because like I said, you know, those 10 cups of teas, that's, that's, you're getting nothing. You're just getting a whole lot of paperwork that nobody's doing anything on. So our JMA has, uh, the District Council and the Tribal JMA has seven schedules and it took blimmin' three years just to write the schedules and in that time nobody was doing anything. So all that work needs to be really well planned so when you hit the ground you actually can start demonstrating when our iwi partners come in, oh, well, now I'm speaking from a council perspective, when they come in the room, they need to be able to say, well, what have you fellas done that's different since we've had the JMA? Mm. Oh, we wrote a schedule, and what difference has that made to the river? Or none. So, yeah, we just need to, to be better better in planning. And as on the iwi side of the table, we need to expect that. We need to have that expectation. I want this, we expect to see this. So we've got to set those standards, because sometimes council doesn't really know what it is that they should be aiming for. So we have to actually um, we have to tell them. So, yeah, it's all nice to... We did a lot of building relationship stuff, but that's over. Let's do the money. <laughs> And the last bit, and we've touched on this, was um, the, right, the right mix of people. Um, yeah, we've got to be really, you know, I know in the iwi space that we, we do have to, we have to answer to so many people that want a piece of us. Can you come on this committee? Can you be on this advisory board? And sometimes it gets, and, and here I am being very open now that, you know, sometimes, like, oh, can you go on that committee? But we actually need to say, you've got the right skills, or we need a strong governor in there with great experience, and that's where we need you to go. And we need to, if you're going to put your hand up for iwi work, man, you've got to be prepared to work. We know that. Um, but, yeah, sometimes we have to push some of our whanau to either upskill or get off because you're not actually making a difference, go over there, that's where you'll be really good and we'll put so-and-so over there. And we have to have those conversations, otherwise council, yeah, council um, will just go, oh, let's just have a, should we just, what donut should we have this time, what flavour, and you know, that's not what we want. <laughs> Being a bit harsh, but a little bit, because it just takes too long, otherwise, eh, hey, it takes too long. Sorry, Tip, you better close it with something. No, no, sensible. <laughs> I just wanted to add, I'm a second term um, councillor in a Māori ward in the Waikato region. That only happened because of the river settlements. My, my region's not that proactive that they wanted to see Māoris there. That's the truth. Uh, straight Gumboot Council, mainly pretty much 70% um, farmers. 
Uh, so they, they again, I'm not. I'm only highlighting because we, they didn't have a natural association with any Māori. I'm the first one some of them have ever met or had real conversations. Yeah, with. they usually think Tipper's there to deliver the catering. We'll <laughs> <laughs> take the money. We'll take the money. We'll take the money. Not that she's the councillor or the chair. Hell yeah, no. Um, but in saying Māori wards, to, to Māori ward or not Māori ward, local government needs all the help it can get to grow up and, uh, and catch up to its community. Mm. That includes us. So whether you do Māori wards, Māori <coughs> committees, Māori standing committees, um, local government needs all those instruments until, again, until it can uh, reinvent itself because <coughs> the conversation has been had without us for 100 plus, you know, yes. tata ki te rua rau tau. And um, it will need a few more years until, it, you know, just the Iwi Council thing will thrive on its own. But we need a whole lot of key takers of that space while we're designing the Fit for Purpose future that I've heard the other speakers talk about. So thank you again for your time. We just want to bring experience, not too many slides. So, no, I mean, no, Captain. Oh, Really, really enjoy that. That caterer, I'm gonna take a kofa for hey. Yeah, you are preaching to the converted. Yeah. Uh, I really like the line. Uh, we can transform our communities if we trust the co-governance space. Absolutely awesome. Really love that. Um, finally, without without uh, further ado, I'd like to um, introduce our our next speaker. And I really like the fact that everyone has changed up the space because actually um, uh, Matsuo Wira has decided to have a quarter over here. I don't mind. Sure. Oh, oh, oh. I'll oh, read yeah, out this. We have this very esteemed quarter to read first. Sir Wira Gardner is a former professional soldier, Lieutenant Colonel. Um, has, he has had a long and distinguished public service career, including extensive governance experience. He was a founding director of the Waitangi Tribunal and founding chief executive of the Ministry of Māori Development, Te Kuni Koku. He has been national director of civil defence, chair of Te Māngai Pāho and deputy chair of Te Ohu Kaimua. He was chair of the Tertiary Education Commission between 2010 and 2012 and the chair of the board of the Museum of New Zealand Te Papa Tonga Rewa between 2010 and 2013, which will be hosting the Rongo Whakata Iwi um, yeah, Arts yeah. Exhibition yeah. next weekend. <coughs> so Wira has made a has been made a Knight of the New Zealand Order of Merit in 2008 for services to Māori. Suweta has published a number of books and is currently working on the history of the company for the 28th Māori Battalion. Ladies and gentlemen, my dear. Thank you. Kia ora tātou, kia ora tātou, whakawhaiti, i runga tēnei, hui whakahirihira i te atanei, nō reira, te hau kāinga, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, e mihi mai whakatau mai, uh, kia mātou i hana mai nei runga te karanga te kaupapa uh, me tēnei uri o mātātua e noho ana i roto o, roto, o, o koutou rohe uh, tēnā koutou uh, kia tātou katoa uh, ko ana te ngākau uh, ko hana mai nei au aha ko mo te wā paku uh, ki te kōrero wāku nei whakāro uh, mō ngā kōrero e puta mai i tēnei ata nō reira tēnā koutou tēnā koutou tēnā tātou <coughs> um, we're in a, a, a couple of weeks of uh, significant promises and great expectations. So I won't promise you much. I'm the chairman of the Local Government Commission, and I can't say that we can solve many of the problems I heard this morning. Uh, we have two principal roles, and the first of those is reorganisations of local government communities. 
<coughs> and we're in the midst of uh, one right now, of bringing the three councils of the Wairarapa together into one council. So that's one of the roles that we have. Another role we have is around representation. And uh, we're required by law every now and again to look at the boundaries of organisations and, and the territorial authorities and determine whether we should strengthen, expand them, which is why um, your Koromatsua at, at the Rangatira in Meng uh, decided to raise the matter on the platform this morning around uh, representation. It's a very important role uh, and that's one that we'll be looking at uh, very shortly. But I do want to comment on some of the issues that we raised this morning because I do think that actually uh, there are a number of things that have come out of here which not only affect local government but also affects all of us as both voters uh, in a national sense uh, and ratepayers because some of the, the remedies that are required to resolve the issues and challenges that have been raised this morning uh, are in your hands. It's where you put your vote, where you decide uh, you want to put pressure, and uh, that's how change occurs. So the first point I want to make about uh, the LLB is, is to congratulate uh, the three iwi of, of, of uh, Tūranganui Akiwa uh, for uh, leveraging that opportunity, uh, uh, because not many others have leveraged the same uh, opportunity that you've got. So what you've done is you've actually required the law of the land through the treaty and its significant impact to uh, give you um, leverage that very few other iwi have. I think that's very significant. Um, and to a certain extent, uh, the leverage of the treaty is a catalyst which we see in the Wairarapa. So in the Wairarapa, if the, uh, we're gonna go to a vote um, shortly for the rate base to decide whether they will all wanna come together. If they do, we're gonna appoint a transition board. That's my commission. And we've, we'll appoint, um, so six members to govern the wider upper until such time as we put in place the <coughs> council. Four of those uh, representatives will be appointed by the three councils, and two will come from Rangitan. One will come from Rangitane, and the other one will come from Natakamanu Kite Wider Upper. Now, some years ago, as some of the speakers have uh, um, indicated, you would not have had that happen. Um, there is resistance to Māori representation. I don't think there's any doubt about that. And so taking the opportunity to leverage uh, the best advantage for your part of the community is wonderful. So I want to congratulate uh, the iwi of Tauranga Moana, uh, Tauranga Moana, Te Te Huri Ngā Whakaaro Ki Mā Tātua, Tūranga Nui Akiwa, and make sure that you, you exercise. So that's the first point I want to make. The second point I want to make is um, excuse me, well, I, just, I did three drafts of my points. This whole process of, of exercise of power and, and Māori communities wanting to participate more actively, both at, at the national government level and at the local government level, is about socialisation of change. Change does not come voluntarily. Uh, most councillors in this country will not voluntarily put up Māori wards, as, as you heard Tipa say. Uh, they will not necessarily be thinking about how they might want to inculcate Māori into their, into their governance entities, not because they don't necessarily want to do it, is they just haven't thought about it, or someone hasn't pushed them to do it. And so over the last 20 years, we've seen this kind of action-reaction occurring, that is, protest, radical action, reaction, change occurs. So change will follow um, very, very strong action from groups of people within New Zealand, and I think that's wonderful. And I've been observing it over 30 years. Uh, I've <coughs> regrettably been on the other side of it, being pushed and shoved and caught a coop up and all that kind of stuff. I don't care, we've changed, and change is good. And I think that kind of evolution through socialising the process is very important. There's no doubt the treaty is a catalyst. As I said, you've used the, the, the negotiated in the treaty um, this kind of process which we're undergoing that. <coughs> Can I just be very clear that local government is not your treaty partner. Your treaty partner is the Crown. And so in the, uh, the, the River Trust, uh, the Waikato uh, um, governance is different from yours is because the Crown 
appoints its representatives to meet with the iwi's representatives. So it's the Crown iwi. That's the treaty relationship. The Crown, unless it moves legislation to do so, cannot actually tell men what to do. So local government is another level of governance in New Zealand, but it is not a treaty relationship. It may occur as a consequence of the treaty partners enacting legislation or agreeing to legislation to give effect to the powers of the treaty. Nevertheless, it does provide you with some mechanisms, and already we see one, the LLB is one of those. I don't think there's any doubt that local government and, and every leadership are very critical components of how a community progresses. And leadership is vital on both sides because leadership can help the socialisation occur, leadership can help the communications occur, and if you don't have leadership or you have a resistance to change, then that is neutral or leadership that is not looking forward to the future. So what we've got now is a situation where in effect the treaty partners <coughs> have indicated to Meng and his team and to Penny and others of uh, the, the iwi of Tūrangi Akiwa that we give you the authority, the overall umbrella authority to proceed to negotiate how your relationship will occur. So it's still a process of negotiation, it's still underway and, and uh, as Meng says, uh, you will come up with a Tūrangi Nui Akiwa uh, solution in the due course. Um, can I just give you some examples of where leadership might help or not help? We've seen the changes in the um, Bay of Plenty Regional Council with the Māori wards there. Being who ha about it, mataku te nui mo o te hapori, mataku rātou ka haramai ngā Māori, ka uru ngā Māori rotu ngā rotu ngā ngā komiti o whakahaere, ka raru te nui ngā o te hapori o te Eastern Bay of Plenty. The rain still falls down, the sun comes up in the morning and it goes down in the night, and actually change has occurred for the better. Uh, we've had to see the situation in Taranaki where there was resistance to change. Uh, we've seen Rotorua, uh, Steve Chadwick, putting through her wards, resistance there, but she decided to commit to it. Uh, so leadership is very important in this whole process. Uh, Co-governments. Um, <coughs> Co-governments is, is kind of a form of tinoranga tiritanga. At its highest level, co-governance, say the, the Waikato River Trust and the Crown, is its purest form of tinoranga tiritanga. In a sense, it's the equality of the partnership. And at that co-governance level, the demands of that level of partnership have to be negotiated. And it is not a mature, um, sophisticated, well-experienced council on the one hand saying, ane ngā kōrero Māori, me whakaahe koutou. Ane te wahi o te tūtūnga to signature. No, that's not what it is. Co-governance is about the relationship and the negotiation of that relationship. Um, there's, a, there's an issue I've heard quite uh, consistently about resourcing, and I think that's right. Unless you're properly resourced, you are actually doomed to fail. There is no doubt about it, because you're dealing with a very, and I'll talk about our own city here. The council has been around for a long time. It is sophisticated, it has <coughs> technologies, it has experience. And so when the three here we come together, it is a, an unequal balance, which I'm sure the leadership <coughs> of Ben Foon will correctly, and his councillors who are on this co-governance arrangement will recognise and will provide for. Because if you do not provide for that resourcing, it will be an unequal relationship and it will not be a co-governance relationship. So that's something you need to keep in the back of your minds as well. Um, communications, uh, there's, there's two levels, there's several levels of communication. That's a cross between the two parties and that's Actually, the council have a significant role here as well. There will be <coughs> resistance in the community about this whole thing. I mean, number 38 on Winston's list gets up and says she wants to, 
don't know what she said, but it got recorded or here, and I called her to the mate away. So Winston slaps her down, but she still talks. And the reason she's still talking is she's number eight up 38 on the list. She's never going to go to Parliament. So at the two, I get the ten, they want get the parky waha, one and they for Carlo, and um, but that communication of a council has to actually provide the socialisation that is necessary to make this go as smoothly as possible. Both men uh, and, and his, uh, the co-governance entities will know there are robust challenges ahead of him, even around resources uh, and around communications. Nevertheless, if we do not strip all the, the, the veneer away and understand what the real issues are, I think we will have a difficult time of it. Um, competence, I think, is a very, very important issue. Um, and there is a real rub here uh, because uh, in Māori communities, to achieve a position is about mana. Mena, kapiranga koe ki te panahi te tangata tōna tūranga, ah, motoikota, because you will have resistance. And so, it's all very well saying we'll have criteria and we'll have selection processes <laughs> and we'll have all these wonderful things, but actually, People who hold these positions have worked very hard all their lives. And there is actually no reason why you cannot have a political appointment as long as there is proper resourcing for a technical support group to provide the politician with the advice. Now, Toro says that, uh, you know, um, I don't necessarily agree with what he said about that, because actually good technicians are, are, are helpful. Ultimately, you, the politician, have to make the decision. So I don't necessarily see the, the necessity for tipping out um, incompetent people, I, I say incompetent because they don't meet the criteria. Um, and I go back to the CNI settlement where, uh, following 20 years of argument between the t entities of Tarawa and Matatua, we came to a settlement on the CNI. And actually, the way that the IWI leaders ran it is probably most of them, most of them would have been incompetent to go into a formal commercial negotiation but they were supreme experts in Reo and Tikanga. So what they did was they had two rules. One is there would be no lawyers in the room. Sorry, Robin, you would have been booted out. <laughs> there were no lawyers in the room. And mena e uawa kai mui rata ka huri rata i te reo Māori. So Tikanga prevailed. And then they had three negotiators, Matt um, Graham Pryor, and um, from Tuwharetō, um, Forrester, quite the name. Anyway, they did the implementation. So there's no reason why you can't mix and balance these things, and I don't think we should exclusively uh, knock people out because they don't have the necessary level of competence. Uh, can I leave, finish with this, this observation? <coughs> this process is the thin end of the wedge. I've been involved now for 30 years, mostly on the government side, as the director of the first director of the national um, of uh, the Waitangi Tribunal in 1988, then uh, Puri then on, and I've been involved in most of the big bodies and at the forefront of a lot of the activities that have occurred. I can tell you, in 30 years, there's been tremendous change, and I know some of you are hoarhawk because you're not moving fast enough. But the change will come through beginning a process, and who is that? That. Chinese philosopher who said that a journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. You're in the first step now, you're, you're, you're getting together, you've heard some experts uh, um, um, talk to you, and you have to come up with your own solutions. I'm very interested now because I live in, in Tūnanganui Akiwa, and I said to my wife, don't tell her this, that when she's retired now, as long as she doesn't get under my feet, I'll stay in Tūnanganui. Mena <laughs> Um, kia kaha koutou, ki te aki aki uh, tēnei kaupapa, uh, kia pūawai ngā whakāro, 
Kei roa te tēnā tēnā o ngā iwi o Tūranga iwi ngā kiwa, ngā pūāwai, ngā whakāro o ngā tāngata i roti tēnei hapuri, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tāpea katoa. Before I do, I just wanted to say, I uh, just want to thank you guys for turning up. You know, uh, it's all good to put on all of the presentations in the world, but it doesn't, uh, you need to have a very uh, engaged and competent crowd in order for the presentations to actually uh, give effect or you know, have some kind of effect. I'd also like to thank our uh, participants in the LLB, the, um, our, our council participants and our EU participants, and also the staff that support our respective organisations. Um, Last and definitely not least, I want to thank our speakers for today. You guys provided a lot of uh, a wide range of information for all of us. I found a lot of it very, very helpful and very, very informing and, um, and very engaging as well. So on behalf of those that are here, thank you very much. I'd like to give one more round of applause to all of our speakers. Auntie Moira is giving me the giving me the eye to give you the eye. Um, uh, the tiopera to I guess for Kuti our um, our um, our mia. Okay, I quit there. Ah, kia ora tata. Kia ora tata. Ah, how are you? Far. Ko te kore roa tūranga nui. Ko tūranga nui pāri ki reke ai te kore. Ah, ki te moana nui a kiwa ara ngā hau e wha i mataki taki ki a mātou. Ngā mihi ki ngā pū kōrero, a wera, long time. We've been in the mūra o te ahi and we're just starting a big push. Toro, I think if Ozzy was here, he'd say, crack the whip. So a kuna te kōrero ki a kōta. Waka tōpū ki a ngā kōrero, O ngā urupā, ngā awa, arā, then the rainforest starts moving. We've got a big job, we've got a lot of mokopunas, get them ready. One of the things I was really privileged to hear was um, Professor um, Head in the, uh, at the Whare Wānaua Awaniarangi graduation. It's now time for you to move into inf infrastructure. So my challenge to you, Toro, is when are you going to deal with the resource consents with the forestry and with all the logging rigs? And how, how, how can you get 20 rigs down in Mohaka in a, a deal with Penpack? I, uh, I say that because we've got to get down to what the power of the resource consents does. In Nari, I'll say I'll cut a kit. Et te matunu i te rangi, ka taumai te wā mo te whakāru ki tō kingi tangi i noho noho i te wairua tapu. Ko i ukraiti te kia, te kairanga, te karanga, kei tua o te āra i ngā āna hera teitei, i mataki-taki ki a mātou, te triti o waitangi, i runga i te mata o te whenua Aotearo, ki te mōna nui i ākiwa, i roti i te ingoa tapu o te tama i ukraiti. Āki, 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 āmi. Āmi.